this is Joe back with another video showing a little bit about using the uh, world map for flight planning and navigation. Uh, while most of the time I like to plug my flight plan into the aircraft manually, not every time, but most of the time, uh, I still like to come and check out the world map. It's really useful for checking out uh, cloud cover, uh, precipitation, winds aloft. Uh, first you go over to uh, open filters and uh, by default the wind effects are off and the weather layer is just set to clouds. You can come down to clouds, you can turn it off, you can switch it over to precipitation and this is really good for seeing where any storms may be uh, really bad weather uh, what to avoid maybe plot a chart uh, or route around that uh, as you can see right here up in New York area there's there's a little bit off in the off the coast there but most of the country is uh, not not too severe there's light rains out west over the uh, Rockies there the Northwest you can come back down to open filters and switch it back to clouds uh, you can see where all the clouds are at uh, you can come down to wind effects this is really good for picking out uh, which runways to take off from if you're at a non-controlled airport uh, now of course you can look at Navigraph it shows you the weather as well uh, but this gives you a good visual representation uh, and it's got three different options for wind effects it's got ground low altitude and high altitude aloft winds aloft Uh, let's see, well I guess we'll just zoom into uh, my home airport uh, in Conway, Arkansas. Yeah, it's showing about, uh, I don't know if that's really accurate, but it might be. It's pretty windy outside right now at uh, 25 knots coming directly out of the west and if I was planning a flight uh, flying east or west uh, I'd be looking at the winds if uh, and depending on whether the winds were higher up high uh, which they usually are once you get into the jet stream if you're flying an aircraft with performance enough to fly that high. Uh, but it just depends. But you can look at uh, the wind speed. And let's say since the wind's coming out of the west, if we were flying from Conway or the Little Rock area, to say Oklahoma City the winds uh, below 18,000 feet are around between 20 and say 27 26 knots uh, coming from the west and uh, You may want to fly higher or lower, depending on the speed. Uh, in this case, if we flew higher, the wind speed would be a little lower. Uh, whereas with, if we fly lower, it's uh, the wind speed is higher. We'd have a, a stronger headwind flying west to Oklahoma City. 
So we'd want to get up higher. Now, most of the time you want to get up as high as you can within safety margins. But you also have to think about wind speeds aloft uh, and picking while you want to get up high, you may want not want to get up as high as possible because if you're flying with a headwind, it may be higher. Now, if you're flying with a tailwind, let's say we're flying from uh, Little Rock to to uh, Atlanta. Well, we'll be flying with a tailwind, so we want to fly where the winds are the highest so we can get there as fa faster. Uh, so it just depends and uh, and also you can put this back to uh, wind effects to off so we can get a better picture at the world map you can scroll all the way down to airports you can filter out what kinds of airports you want displayed on the world map uh, But at the very bottom under navigation, it'll say air spaces, nav aids, and fix an RNAV position report. Uh, this is also really useful for planning out flights using the world map or, or at least uh, charting it down uh, on a notepad or on a tablet. Uh, but it will, if you flip on air spaces, it will show you controlled air spaces versus non-controlled air spaces. Uh, not quite as detailed as, say, a VFR sectional chart, but still, you can see around here in Little Rock, it, uh, it shows you the airspace around Little Rock National. Uh, that's Class C airspace. Uh, if you flip over to Memphis, see, and it's hard to di differentiate between different airspace types, but with the yellow lines certain circling an airport, you can, you know that that's controlled airspaces. But, uh, and I might do another video on airspaces and how to read sectional charts. Uh, BFR sectional charts, uh, but but basically uh, the yellow lines indicate the boundary between controlled airspace and non-controlled airspace. Uh, so you'd have airspaces flipped on under navigation on the uh, main map. Memphis is Class B airspace, I believe. And uh, Little Rock National is just Class uh, Class C. And then say a towered airport that's not Class C uh, would just be uh, would have a smaller controlled airspace around the airport and that would be class D. Uh, and nav aids, turning those on. Uh, let's see, we'll zoom into Flying buff. Uh, flip on nav aids, and it pops up the ILS and VOR stations a lot easier. Uh, you can see this showing the ILS for. Uh, Pine Bluff Regional Airport. Uh, 
Let's go back to Little Rock. Uh, But uh, this one's got it obscured by a fixed position. Uh, I believe the VOR stations, yeah, there we go. Pop into view on the map when you turn nav aids on. Uh, it also shows uh, NDBs. Or non-directional beacons. Uh, it'll show the ILS. You can actually, if it'll work correctly. Uh, maybe I have to close this. Yeah, there we go. It'll. You can click on an av aid, and it'll show up the localizer. This one's as a uh, ILS and it'll show you the frequency to tune into and the very bottom one which I almost never turn on because it really clutters up the map uh, but it's also useful if you want to pick out specific waypoints, give you more waypoint options when you're planning flights, is clicking on fix and RNAV position. You can see these pop up. Uh, these are these star looking, the, the ones that look like stars, four pointed stars. Uh, starburst looking icon those are our nav position reports uh, and the triangles are just uh, fixes and and they're not uh, really ready they're not uh, beacons or radio stations they're just they're just points in space that uh, are put on a a map or a GPS to allow pilots to line up. See if you click on that waypoint and you fly to it and your next waypoint would be the runway you'd be perfectly lined up to land on that runway. Let's say I start a f flight coming in uh, from the south and I want to be already lined up with the runway uh, a good waypoint would be to pick one of these R navs. Uh, see, uh, it's just got us a straight shot from where we entered the airspace to the runway, but we won't be lined up with the runway by the time we get there. So we would pick a waypoint this are nav positions and then once we fly to this waypoint and our next one is the runway we'll be perfectly lined up with the runway to, to land and uh, yep that's pretty much everything I wanted to show about the uh, the world map for now is just simple navigation stuff uh, and different options you can select from the open uh, from the uh, filters options thank you for watching and goodbye